I'm here with Alexander McCurris, editor-in-chief of the Duran. Alexander, let's talk about Adam Schiff and the way he's uh, obtained phone records. Phone records of Giuliani, of uh, Devin Nunes, and of John Solomon. Um, John Solomon is someone that we actually cite very often in our videos. He used to write for The Hill. Um, he's probably one of the best journalists who's covered Russia Gate and Ukraine Gate that I can think of. Um, you know, Andrew McCarthy, John Solomon, Sarah Carter. I mean, there's a lot of journalists, but John Solomon has really done incredible investigative work. He's even done the legwork and gone to Ukraine and interviewed all the players. And uh, there is a campaign to smear him and discredit him. Obviously, Schiff is up to a lot of no good. These phone records, the fact that he got these phone records, Alexander, scares the hell out of me, should scare the hell out of everybody, everybody that Schiff is, is abusing his power in such a way. It's a very, very slippery slope. Alexander, get into the story, which is extremely important. And I'll also say one more thing. I think this story is kind of a slow burn story in that it didn't have much momentum, but with each passing day, more and more people are talking about it because it is extremely, it is an extremely important story. Alexander, take us into it. Absolutely, so it is a very important story. Can I just um, echo before I discuss this, your comments about uh, John Solomon. The point to remember about John Solomon is that he is an investigative reporter. Um, people like us do commentary based on information that he obtains. And the information he's obtained has been absolutely reliable. There is an orchestrated campaign to try and discredit him because he's actually gone to Ukraine and has unearthed all sorts of facts there. But as he has pointed out repeatedly on this blog that he now has and on interviews in Fox News, in fact, his reporting has been carefully verified and uh, um, authenticated. And this particular allegation, which I continuously see all over the place, it's still being churned out in all sorts of news place, places that um, Lutsenko, the former Ukrainian procurator uh, general, the former attorney general of Ukraine, has retracted the claim that he made to Solomon about uh, uh, Yovanovitch, the, um, the U.S. ambassador and the U.S. embassy, putting pressure upon him to drop investigations of certain corrupt or possibly corrupt Ukrainian officials. That retraction has never happened. Lutsenko has confirmed both in video and in written comments to John Solomon that that, that story about the retraction is simply not true. It's based on a Ukrainian newspaper article. It has no reality. Lutsenko himself is rejecting it so please say um, that again say that again because there's a lot of fake news around what you just said a lot of fake news huge amount of fake news i'm seeing it all over the place i'm seeing everywhere time and again in the most extraordinary places you know in, in really sort of mainstream media outlets they say that lutsenko retracted the allegation that Yovanovitch, the u.s ambassador uh, uh, it put pressure on him to drop investigations of allegedly corrupt Ukrainian officials. Lutsenko has never retracted that allegation. That is based on a report by a Ukrainian newspaper, which Lutsenko is denying. He has denied it to John Solomon, both in, in written form and in a video format. So all the, all the time I'm seeing this thing being repeated by various newspapers and media outlets who are attacking John Solomon for fake reporting, and they're engaging in fake reporting themselves because they are continuously reporting something, a retraction, which has never happened, and which the person who was supposed to have carried out that retraction denies ever took place so it's a it's a very disturbing story and it's a very disturbing campaign and my own belief now that we see all this information about the phone records which have been published 
my own belief, I can't prove this, but my belief is that the person who's behind it, who's behind this campaign, is none other than Adam Schiff. Now, let's get on to what Adam Schiff has done. Let's think who these three people whose phone records he's published are. Devin Nunes is the senior ranking Republican on the House Intelligence Committee. He is a Republican representative, a member of Congress. He was until the 2018 um, um, midterm elections, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. He is, in other words, a very senior congressman. Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani, is a lawyer. He is Donald Trump's personal lawyer. John Solomon is a journalist. Now, normally, what go, you know, the communications of a lawyer with his client are treated as confidential. I, I would argue that that even extends to you know the log of phone records. Um, it seems that some of these phone records of Giuliani's, which have been published, uh, relate to conversations with Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump is not named, but that's what most people believe to be the case. Now, there are technical grounds for saying that this publication of the phone records is not actually a, a breach of privilege and is not illegal because it was obtained as a uh, result of what looks to have been a congressional subpoena. I, however, would say that even if it is not a technical breach or privilege, it is still highly unethical. It's something you do not do. I think it is highly unethical to publish the phone records of one of your political opponents, in this case, Devin Nunes, in order to embarrass him. The phone records of Devin Nunes show Devin Nunes doing his job as a representative of the United States, talking to possible sources of information, talking to possible witnesses. One of the people he's spoken to is clearly Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani, and why wouldn't he? And the other is this man, Lev Parnas, who is supposed to be a, 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 a one of um, Giuliani's contacts. Now, can I just say about those you know about those things there is no law there is no reason why devin nunes should not speak to these people <laughs> nunes has committed no wrong by talking to parnas his tourist spoke break committed no wrong by speaking to giuliani again these are private conversations there's no reason to publicize them and last but not least, John Solomon is a journalist and he is entitled to all the various uh, protections that the US Constitution provides to journalists. Again, on what possible grounds do we have congressional subpoenas be used to fish out their phone records? And what is the relevance of all this information? in an impeachment case. We know that uh, we know that Adam Schiff has the records because of where he published them. He published them in an addendum to his um, re impeachment report, which he sent to Nadler, the uh, chair of the House Judiciary Committee, in support of the, uh, you know, claimed the, the intended impeachment of Donald Trump. How do any one of these phone records in any way assist in that impeachment? This is a hit job by a powerful congressman against his political opponent, Devin Nunes, against the uh, lawyer of the president he is trying to pull down, bring down Giuliani, and against a journalist, John Solomon, who has been undertaking reporting 
which is contradicting his story. I think deeply unethical, profoundly wrong, and extremely scary. It seems this is how Adam Schiff operates. We've seen Adam Schiff practice these unethical behaviors yeah. before, specifically with Cohen, correct? In the Russian case. Absolutely. Gate. I mean, that Absolutely. was a clear breach of the client yeah. attorney privilege. Absolutely correct. That's my own view. Yes. So this is not something new to Schiff. No. But does it, doesn't this show that Schiff is panicking, Alexander? Yes. I mean, oh, yes, this, is a, this is a desperation move in panic. He's got nothing. He has it's, got nothing. Well, we discussed, we've discussed uh, his actual impeachment report in a recent video. And we've explained in that, in that video that there is actually, when you drill down to it, there's nothing there. I mean, he hasn't, I mean, he's not been able to prove that there was this great quid pro quo that he's talking about. And he's not been able to prove that even if this was a quid pro quo, it was any sort of crime or anything that you impeach a precedent over. I mean, you know, that's... That's a, a, a that's 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 what we established. So what he's doing is that he's spreading dirt about his opponents. In this case, Nunes, Solomon, and Giuliani, and he's doing it in a deeply unethical way. Now, I, I'm going to make a guess, by the way, that he obtained these records from the relevant phone com companies. I'm also extremely concerned that those phone companies, once they receive those subpoenas, didn't contact the people involved, Giuliani, Nunes, and Solomon, and tell them, we just ought to tell you that there is, in fact, a outstanding request, uh, a subpoena from the Congress for release of your records. Because I'm absolutely sure that if Solomon, um, Nunes, and Giuliani had known about this, they would have, they would have, they would have obviously complained and they would have probably made some sort of application to the court to keep their phone records confidential, which is their legal right. Yeah, that was AT&T that handed the phone records. Well, there you go, at and That's a huge cause of concern. Well, I would have thought- I mean, this is, this is, we're seeing the surveillance state in the United States just literally yeah. unfold before our eyes. Absolutely. I mean, you know, so what happens if Adam Schiff decides that he wants anybody's phone records or he does his issue a subpoena, a subpoena none of us knew anything about. We didn't know that this subpoena had been made. And he goes off to AT&T and asks them to provide him with somebody's phone records. It could be done. To, it was done to David Nunes. It was done to John Solomon. It was done to uh, Rudy Giuliani. It could be done to you. It could be done to me. It could be done to any number of people. And we would know nothing about it. And none of those people knew anything about it. And then it, it is published by someone like Adam Schiff in an impeachment report, even though that information obtained in that way, in that, as I say, deeply unethical and very troubling way, is completely irrelevant to the issue of that that, that is supposed to be set out in that impeachment report. I mean, it, it, it's... I mean, frankly, you know, I, 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 I'm starting to despair of the United States. I, I cannot believe this sort of thing. I would never have believed this sort of thing would go on. The United States, which always used to take uh, uh, privacy rights uh, uh, and people's rights to their records so seriously, acts in this incredibly casual way. I mean, you know, a, a, a congressman, a former, a, a lawyer, a former federal prosecutor does this thing. And a telephone company, you know, the once, you know, the world's biggest, most historic telephone company just, just complies with it. I mean, it, 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 it astounds me. It beggars belief that this, uh, this sort of thing is happening. I mean, I don't remember Joe McCarthy. You know, I, you know, I don't remember because I wasn't alive then. But I mean, I read lots about what you, Joe McCarthy used to get up to in the fifties. I've never heard. I don't remember reading anything like this. 
Some would say that AT&T colluded with Adam Schiff to bring down the president, are they not? I, I mean, this is, this is what it is. is. Is it not big tech? Are we not seeing big tech, which has all this data on everybody, colluding with the Democrats in order to bring down the president of the United States? That, that is what it is at its heart, at its essence. This is yeah. as serious as it gets. Today it's at and Tomorrow it's it's Facebook. The next day it's it's Twitter or Google. I mean, and it's and today it's Adam Schiff. Tomorrow it's Maxine yeah. Waters. The next day it's Pelosi. No, today absolutely. it's Trump. Well, of course it is. I mean, it could be Mark anybody. Yeah. The next day, who is it going to be? Well, exactly. Well, exactly. I mean, it could be anybody at any time. And of course, you're perfectly right to say that uh, you know at the moment it's Adam Schiff who's driving driving this thing, and you're quite right in saying the big tech and all these people are currently aligned allied with the Democrats, but you know, make no mistake about it. I mean, that could one day change and it could one day be that, you know, people on the left, on the political left, I mean, they've had plenty of experience of being, you know, being spied on. I mean, a, a, and having their records released or misused in all kinds of ways. This could easily be done to them one day. And it's, you know, if, if this precedent takes hold, one day it will be. It's in the nature of the thing. Now, collusion, which you use, the word you use is a very strong word. But can I just say something? I think I, I, I don't think it's a, it's a wrong word because, I mean, I don't know what kind of interactions took place between Schiff and his staff and at and I mean, I don't know what passed between them. I still find it astonishing that um, at and simply receives these phone records and just hands them over without telling the people concerned. I, I mean, at the very least, it seems to me that it owed them a duty. Now, and you know, it could have pushed back on these subpoenas. It has a right to. It could have perfectly pro properly said to Adam Schiff, look, these we received these subpoenas. There are important rights of privacy here. There are important concerns about privacy. We are not prepared to simply give out phone details of phone records of members of Congress, senior lawyers, and a prominent journalist in this way. If you if you want to push this thing, we'll see you in court about it. AT and T has the resources to resist a subpoena, and they have the resources. Well, obviously they have the resources to inform their customers of what's ha happening. And those customers, in this case, as I said, three very important people, would have had ample cause, it seems to me, to contest their, that, their, those subpoenas and go to court. So, I mean, the whole thing is just terrible. Yeah, this is not, you said it perfectly, Alexander, this is not a right, left, liberal, conservative no. No. issue. If, you know, right now they're targeting Trump. Like yeah. you said, tomorrow they could be targeting. No. Yeah any number of progressives, any number of liberals. Yeah. Yes. This is Adam Schiff is burning down the entire yes. U.S. system. I mean, he is Absolutely. burning it down at this Absolutely. very moment and not in a good way. Not no, in no. a good way. No. And this is coming, and isn't it interesting, Alexander, this is coming from a man who is sponsored by a Ukraine oligarch, who is sponsored, his patron is a Ukraine oligarch, an arms dealer, Ukraine oligarch. That is fact. Yeah. This is a man that, and this was even brought up during the hearings. I forgot which, uh, which congressman brought it up, but this is a man that himself was pranked by two Russian comedians mm -hmm. in order to initiate a quid pro quo for what he thought were nude photos or something during the right. Miss Universe in, in Moscow. And he was more than willing to collude in order to bring down absolutely. the U.S. president. So all this is coming from this guy. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I, I have to say, I mean, Adam Schiff is somebody who, um, I mean, he already is behaving in a very dangerous manner and already has far too much power on his, in his hands. But you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a system, in another system, the kind of system that I'm sorry to say the U.S. seems to be evolving into. Um, I mean, the idea of Adam Schiff and people like him 
being able to operate in this fashion just makes the blood run cold. I should make, by the way, one further point. That, you know, let, let's assume that Adam Schiff issued an entirely appropriate subpoena for some other phone records to AT&T. Um, and these um, phone records of Solomon Nunes and, and, and Giuliani came up by chance. You know, they were scooped up in the subpoena. The first thing to do, the first thing to say is that in that case, AT&T should approve them out. I mean, it was inappropriate of AT&T to pass on those, uh, those phone records, and they should have informed Adam Schiff that they were not prepared to do so. You know, they would have said to him, look, we understand, we respect your subpoena, we're prepared to provide you with some information, we can't provide you with this. But let's say Adam Schiff, nonetheless, by chance, because AT&T didn't do their job properly, did get hold of this information. It is completely wrong and entirely unethical for him to publish it. It's not, his, it's not part of the business of the impeachment. In fact, what he ought to have done in this case is not published it and informed these three people, Giuliani, uh, 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 Nunes and Solomon, that there'd been a violation, a data protection violation. So that, that's, how it, that's how it seems to me that would have been the proper thing to do. He does none of these things. What he is doing, as you absolutely rightly say, is he's obliterating the entire constitutional and legal protections that people in the United States have in order to get a Donald Trump to pursue this partisan battle with Donald Trump, which um, he has he's doing. I mean, I, I don't even understand quite why he's doing it in this fanatical way, because uh, that's the other thing about Adam Schiff. He doesn't impress me very much as a fanatic, actually. I mean, he's he's too, um, I don't know, I, I, he doesn't Stupid. come across, well, I was, well, you took the word out of my mouth. He's he's not intelligent enough to be a really, um, you know, fanatical investigator in that way. I mean, he, he seems to me to be fulfilling some sort of great partisan role, playing some great partisan performance, doing all of this, doing enormous damage along the way to the United States. And I'm not even talking about the personal damage he might be doing to all sorts of people who have been involved. I mean, Nunes can pop, can deal with it because as I said, he's an important man. He's in the Congress. Giuliani can probably deal with it. I mean, he's he's an important lawyer. He's got all sorts of um, resources he can call on. But John Solomon, as I said right at the beginning of this program, is clearly being targeted in a campaign. My own belief, as I said, is that Adam Schiff is behind it. And he is a journalist. You're doing this to a journalist in the country, which was the first to write into its constitution via the First Amendment protections for journalists because it understood their importance in preserving democracy. Well, they threw that out the door when they went after Assange. Well, I mean, they, they threw did. it out the door a long time ago, but the Assange yeah. thing is, well, once we said it, it's a slippery yeah. slope and now it's it's just getting well, out of hand and uh, it's good. Schiff is it's, just continuing the practice. What does this good. have to do, Alexander? It's, it's, with... it's good you brought up Assange because, yeah. of course, this is exactly what it shows. It shows that the uh, protections for the media are just completely breaking down. I mean, the, all this fake news thing, you know, that we've been hearing all the time and people being banned and deplatformed and all that kind of thing is also part of this. But here we see a mainstream media journalist, because John Solomon has worked for The Hill, he's worked for Washington, for The Washington Times, he's worked for mainstream media institutions. We see a mainstream media journalist being targeted and a campaign orchestrated against him and his media records being published simply because he's doing his job. Final question, what does any of this have to do with the Trump Zelensky phone call? 
it doesn't. It has nothing to do with it, which is, as I said, what makes this so so especially bad. I mean, what, what one one can sort of see in sort of some crazy tangential world. I mean, I'm going to say something else about Adam Schiff. I mean, he's like a lot of people who are not ultimately very bright. He has a very complicated mind. He tends to see things in a very conspiratorial way. He makes all kinds of connections, which no, you know, no, no heart, you know, nobody with two cell, brain cells to run to, to rub together would actually see. So one can just imagine that in sort of you know, this crazy, complicated way that Adam Schiff sometimes thinks, you know, he's he's found some evidence of some great conspiracy here. As I said, there's no conspiracy. Nunes has a right to talk to people like Giuliani. Nunes has a right to talk to people like Parnas. Giuliani has a right to talk to his client. He has a duty to talk to his client. And uh, and Solomon has a right to do his job. This is this is all these people have done. There's no crime involved in talking to people over the phone. So I mean, this has no conceivable relevance in these impeachment proceedings it bears no it has no relevance to what trump said to zelensky on the 25th of july it has no relevance to this question of a quid pro quo that we've been hearing so much about and which adam schiff has been completely unable to to prove so why publish this material what, what, what does it show i mean this is this is fringe conspiracy mania uh, it's the sort of thing you know adam schiff is the first person to accuse other people of i mean he talks about ukraine's meddling in the u.s election as a as a discredited conspiracy theory even said it's been admitted to by ukrainian officials themselves but he appears to believe in all kinds of conspiracy theories himself but the difference is, he's exercised, he's got, and he's exercising the power to try to lend some weight to these conspiracy theories by issuing these subpoenas and publishing this information. And I come back to AT&T, shame on you. <laughs> not a crime to talk to somebody over the phone, no, Alexander, no. not yet. No, not yet. Well, quite. Not I mean, yet. one wonders. One wonders for how long. In Adam Schiff's world, it presumably is. It presumably is a crime for Nunes to talk to Giuliani and for Nunes to talk to Lev Parnas. By the way, I should say Nunes doesn't remember the call with Parnas, or at least he says he doesn't. You can take that, you can believe it or not, as you wish. But you know, it is not a crime for Nunes to want to talk to Parnas. It is not a crime for Nunes to want to talk to Giuliani. And it is not a crime for Giuliani to want to talk to Donald Trump. And it is not a crime for John Solomon to talk to Giuliani, which apparently on occasions he's done. So there is literally nothing there and absolutely nothing there that justifies having all these people's telephone records published in this way. Not a crime yet, Alexander. You got a journalist sitting in Belmarsh prison, getting tortured slowly to death. You have 24 FBI agents hitting the, the door of Roger Stone and breaking mm -hmm. down the door to arrest him. You have mm -hmm. people like Carter Page and Papadopoulos and these mm -hmm. guys, you know, having yeah. to, to cut deals in order to not go to prison for God mm -hmm. knows how many years. You have Michael Flynn's life ruined. Yeah. Not yet. This is all such a it's such an ominous sign of, of what's coming. Well, not to mention all the censorship that's going on and continues to go on. Yes. This is just a bad sign of what's coming. Well, absolutely, because because one uh, one one party, the Democrats, lost an election in 2016. You're going to, as I said, undermine the entire constitutional uh, um, and democratic tradition of the United States in order to try to uh, uh, reverse that. I mean, it seems incredible to me that this is happening. I mean, I, I would not have believed it once, but here it is. It is happening. And as you absolutely rightly say, there are now multiple victims of this thing.
All right, Alexander Vakuris, editor in chief of the Durant. Thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on that notifications bell. Smash that like. Find us on iTunes, SoundCloud to get an audio copy of this video as well. And check us out on PayPal and on Patreon and on Subscribestar where you can donate to the Duran and help keep this channel up and running. We appreciate your donations very, very much. And also check us out on Telegram where we post everything we do on the Duran, like when videos go up on YouTube, but not only YouTube, also BitChute and Duran Video, which is our own platform in beta mode. So download Telegram, subscribe to the Telegram channel, and when you do that, you will also see that we are promoting a discount code, Alexander, 20% off. Yes, DRN20, I think it is. DRN20. Oh, no, oh, God. Oh, go. God. Now, can I just say, this is not coordinated. This is this is two great minds drinking from the same mug because we have we absolutely love our mugs. We, we think our mugs are, are um, well, they are, actually. We don't need to think that. It's, we're stating a fact. They're the best mugs you can buy because they're magnificent they're strong they've uh, they got the wonderful porcelain body they're 15 ounces so you can uh, uh, fill them up with tea as i've been doing all day long as i said i drink lots of tea and uh, i should say once again it's been a cold day today rather wet and miserable so it's my uh, royal blend tea which um you can get in uh, Fortnum and Masons, and which is absolutely marvellous, and it's called Royal Blend because it was actually blended years and years and years ago, allegedly for Edward the Seventh, one of our kings. But anyway, what better what better mug to drink that tea from than a magnificent mug like this? And this emblem that you see here is a, actually a very handsome em emblem. It's the it's the sword and the shield because these are. This is a special forces unit, so it gives you a sense of, you know, that these are um, that these are soldiers. So they got the sword and the shield, and the letter A, which is the Alpha Force, Alpha for the Alpha Force, which is Russia's elite special forces unit, the one that does the same sort of things for Russia that the Navy SEALs and the Delta Force do. I mean, they've had a resplendent record. Um, they've uh, uh, um, defeated many terrorists apparently in the Caucasus, in Syria, in all sorts of places. And their most famous operation was actually way back in 1979, where they stormed the presidential palace in Kabul in Afghanistan and uh, uh, captured it despite the fact that they were outnumbered something like 10 to 1. So they're quite remarkable people, incredibly strong, incredibly well trained and incredibly tough. And they have a beautiful emblem or as you can see there and we have it on our mugs so you can see what a great thing it is so we got these amazing mugs and we got lots of other mugs this is the one with the russian federation which you can probably just about see there this is with my absolute favorite diplomat sergey lavrov the foreign minister of russia but there's lots of other mugs alex has been broadening our range all the time and of course, we don't just have mugs, we've got amazing shirts like this phenomenally elegant and comfortable polo shirt that I'm wearing now, which um, I've worn actually this particular shirt to some pretty resplendent places. And it's incredibly stylish and handsome and looks uh, looks amazing when I do that. I mean, it's absolute smart casual. And you can see there that we've got the double headed eagle of the Duran, which you will find I think it's fair to say on all our shirts and like all our shirts it's 100 percent cotton it's beautifully made it's incredibly comfortable it keeps you uh warm in cold weather like like of the sort we're having here now in london at the moment and it keeps you cool in very hot weather that's what a well constructed all cotton shirt does for you and of course, you've got lots of other types of shirts. We've got long sleeve T-shirts. We've got short sleeve T-shirts. We've got V-neck shirts. We've also got hoodies. We've got hats. We've also got stickers. We've got great things in our shop. This is the season when one buys things. It's almost Christmas. So you can buy our things for yourself and for your friends and for your family. So if you're looking for gifts, both for yourself and for your friends, and you want uh, uh, and you want to make a you know really good impression 
come to our shop, help the Duran by doing so, help yourself. DRN20, as Alex will remind you, and here's and he, he'll tell you how to do it. DRN20, just put it in the checkout page in the little box for the coupon code, DRN20, 20% off all merchandise, everything. Alexander Mercurius, Editor-in-Chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Till next time, everybody, take care.